What part of what I said was adding to confusion? What part of what I said was not clear? We condemn all sexual acts outside of the sacrament of marriage. Welcome to the Father Leo Show, where I am dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. Thank you for being a part of our show, and yes, a movement where I can basically give you a perspective from a priest's point of view in regards to things of faith as it is affected in culture, and then also just offer my commentary. And as I predicted, we have had some doozy comments in regards to the episode I did on releasing the Epstein Epstein files. And, and I knew I was going to get a lot of comments and including a lot of trolling and, and even hate mail, but that's okay because you know what? That's part of conversation. If you aren't willing to have a conversation about the things that matter to you, then what kind of church are we? But we also have to admit that on the internet, on the World Wide Web, people can easily hide behind a profile and they can say whatever they want and they can think that it's true or that they think that they can just get away with saying things and not have me have the right to respond to it. So what I want to do in this episode is kind of respond and reply to some of the comments that I received, whether it be on YouTube or on our Instagram page, on our Facebook page. There's just so many ways that you can make comments. And so I just had my team put some things together so that I can offer a response and keep this conversation going. But I want to thank all of those who do actually watch the show and not just the little clip, because that little clip, we all know it's a teaser. It is a way to get people hooked so that you can hear the rest of the conversation. I am sorry, but a two minute clip ain't going to solve the problem of child trafficking or the issues related to the Epstein scenario. So watch the entire show and then we can have an honest dialogue about what I said and what is being purported in the media regarding this incredibly serious case. But thank you to all of our subscribers. Please make sure you let family and friends know to like, subscribe, share, and also to leave comments. Again, our team and myself, we do review them. Secondly, please consider supporting us on Patreon because it's the only way we can keep a show like this going. All right, so let's just jump right into it. And I'm going to basically review some of these comments and hopefully offer some insight. Here we go. The underscore one ill sin Father, really? Wilton Gregory was the point of the spear when it came to rooting out the pedo subculture in the church. Ironically, he was best friends with Cardinal McCarrick. Gutsy for you to assert that the church has done a thorough job. Okay couple points here. And first of all, by the way, thank you to everyone who do leave comments. This gives me a chance to hear what you're thinking, and hopefully you'll have a chance to, to hear these responses. The one ill sinitua, I, 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 you know, I, I am serious. The church has done a good job, better than any other institution. Have we had our faults? Had we our faults? Absolutely. Now, you mentioned Wilton Gregory, and you make an accusation against him. And I don't know if that is actually fair for anyone to do. Look, you might not like the guy, you might disagree with him completely, but to just call someone a pedo subculture protector and best friends with Cardinal McCarrick, how do you know that? How do you actually know that he was best friends with Cardinal McCarrick? I'm in the church for 25 years a priest now. I don't know this. How do you make such a claim? This is the kind of, this is the kind of, I don't, I don't, I'm not calling you arrogant, but kind of the arrogant comments that I hear from people who disagree. They just like to make accusations without having any proof. I would like for you to prove to me that Cardinal McCarrick and Wilton Gregory were best friends. This is, this, we're treading into dangerous territory here. The other thing, it says, gutsy for you to assert the church has done a thorough job. Okay. Since the exposition that the church was engaged in moving priests around, the church had to report by law, and they had special counsel, 
to make sure that someone went through all the files of every priest in that diocese's or religious institution's history. So I think a thorough job was done. Was it a perfect job? No, nor did I ever claim that it was a perfect job. But what other institution has done? An independent counsel to review everyone's employees' records and files. And believe me, we have a lot of employees. So infrastructural administration, that's going to be a thing for everyone trying to root out this problem. Name another institution that has done what the church has done. So I didn't say perfect, but I did say more thorough than you can ever imagine. All right. The next question is, and by the way, thank you for that comment. Mendoza 3. Hold up here, Father Leo. Hold up. I'm going to disagree and say the church did not expose it. It was exposed for you. We, as a church, were forced to make a change and to start none of it. And to start, none of it came because the Catholic Church woke up one day and said, enough. Uh, sexual abuse within the church had been going on for a long time and everyone knew it. My archdiocese of L.A., Mahoney, knew and did nothing of his own accord. So while I love listening to you, Father Leo, not really going to agree with your opening statement here. Yes, a lot has been done, but it's still not foolproof. Yes, we continue to evolve and grow. Thank you, Mendoza, three, four. First of all, listening to uh, reality or <laughs> sorry, listening to me and my show. I sincerely appreciate it. But when you say you disagree with me because it was exposed for us, that's not 100% true. There have been many people inside the church, including priests, who reported all of this. And guess what? It never went past that reporting on the part of either the police or district attorneys. So unfortunately, as you mentioned here, there has been a culture of pedophilia, but that didn't exist in a bubble of the church. It existed everywhere. And honestly, nobody did anything about it. It just didn't go anywhere. And, and I'm sad to say that either people were ignorant of the real trauma that it causes people who have been abused, or they didn't know what to do about it because there weren't really laws that talked about this. Thirdly, in the day, back in the day, there wasn't a lot of conversation from a psychological, professional, legal point of view. So there was an unfortunately a sad reality that this was just somehow okay. But you may be slightly right in, in saying that it was exposed for us, but it was exposed for us based on what? based on political ambition to destroy, discredit the Catholic Church, and also monetary. And all of that is fine. I couldn't even care less. Sue the Catholic Church. Make it go into bankruptcy, as unfortunately it has in many dioceses. But to say that the Church did not try to expose it is incorrect, because I know several people who tried to expose it. They went to the, uh, the police, and nothing happened. There was a culture of this kind of everywhere. So thank you for listening. Thank you for that. I do agree with this. Yes, a lot has been done, but it's still not foolproof. And I agree. It's still not foolproof. But can I ask you also this? Why has the Epstein file somehow kind of vanished from the conversation on public, uh, public uh, media platforms? It literally has been kind of washed away. In the same way, crimes of certain presidents have just gone away. But crimes of other presidents seem to be on the front page of the news in every headline, every minute of every day. Come on. There is a, there is an, a movement to try to use this unfortunate, sad, disgusting, evil, sinful, wrong... A, a, a conversation about pedophilia and use it as a political weapon against others, but not for your own. No, it needs to be exposed across the board. All right. Other comments here, kind of similar to the one previously. Um, 
M005 Kennedy writes, I agree, but it came from outside pressure. There was just too many high up officials that cover things. The church still hasn't fully addressed the issue of the 90 plus percent of these cases were same sex men to boys. The Pope seems like he will not take a stand supporting the church position on same sex acts in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I follow your post and think you should stick to cooking. Your political and social problems have errors in them. You're adding confusion, adding to confusion, not clarity. You know what? I don't know where you're getting your statistic. 90 plus percent of these cases were same sex acts. Okay. Depending on the statistic, you might have some sort of validity here. But same-sex acts and pedophilia are two, I mean, same -se homosexuality with adults, consenting adults. And I, believe me, I'm not protecting that either. But to equate that to abusing a child, that is disingenuous. And then you come up with these soft, passive, aggressive attacks on me. Just stick to cocking. Eh, you know what? Then don't listen to my stuff. Watch the cooking videos and just kind of, don't comment because if you think I'm actually adding to confusion and not clarity, what part of what I said was adding to confusion? What part of what I said was not clear? We condemn all sexual acts outside of the sacrament of marriage. So these passive aggressive attacks on me and think that all I'm good for is cooking you a meal. Get over yourself. Literally get over yourself. I cook because it became, because it was a hobby and I had a talent for it. That it became a big thing is not my doing, it's God's. But it, God used the cooking as a way to hook people so that I can have a conversation with the bitter herbs of truth. If all you want to do is eat my food and not digest the message, then basically you're like receiving communion on your hand or on your tongue, but you're not allowing the Eucharist to actually touch your soul. And to say that I'm again, wrong on my political and social problems, which ones? Go ahead, name them. If you wanna have a conversation, maybe we can. So M005 Kennedy, tell me what part are incorrect? Because I'm not trying to be defensive here, but you're saying that I'm adding to confusion when so many other people would disagree with you. I think what I'm doing is I'm actually kind of pinging your consciousness and letting you know that you seem to be wanting to dismiss the Catholic Church but excuse the Epstein files. All of that should be exposed. And guess what? This is not a political issue. You made it a political issue. You called it that. It is a moral issue. This is a human rights dignity issue. And I do take it seriously, as well as my cooking. So enjoy the cooking. Don't listen to the rest of the stuff and move on. But if you want to make such a claim that I'm contributing to the confusion, maybe I've shed some light in your darkness and that causes chaos and confusion until you step further into the light. Most people don't realize that food is the weapon that God uses to save us because it's the weapon the devil uses to destroy us. In my book, Epic Food Fight, A Bite-Sized History of Salvation, we trace the historical aspects of faith and realize one really important thing. God is a faithful foodie. How does God use food to save us? This book explores all of the significant ways that food is referenced in the scripture, referenced in our sacraments, and referenced in our personal celebrations. So every bite you eat is certainly not the Eucharist, but it could be an experience of God, not only satisfying you, but even saving you. The book, once again, is Epic Food Fight, A Bite-Sized History of Salvation. And guess how it ends? With an eternal banquet calling your name. All right, here we go. Another comment. Um, okay, this comment, Favi.mam, is kind of long, but she basically wanted to say this, that um, there was an attractive woman who could have made an accusation for a priest who gave godly pastoral care for 30 years 
and um, that that sexual abuse are by wicked women. The priest is not always wrong. Regardless, God sees everything and will judge. And so this is a comment, and I think it was brought to my attention simply because there have been false accusations, and yes, it does ruin a priest's life. No matter how false it is, if there's enough sensationalism around it, it can cause it can cause for a priest to either lose his faculties or lose his mind, or in some cases, lose his hope. Because false accusations occur. And unfortunately, we are creating a culture where innocence is no longer presumed, but requires proof. That's the opposite of true justice. Justice presumes innocence and has to have guilt proven. In this case, the emotions are so high that we can believe anyone if they are convincing enough, and we do know that they are good liars. However, you have to have a real balanced approach to this because we have to take every accusation seriously. But will we actually pursue this process and not get overwhelmed by the emotions and create a reaction to it because that doesn't help as well? And we're just going to do one more comment here um, by Robert Awera. Robert Awera writes, rubbish. Rubbish pedophilia. And by the way, I'm going to read this kind of as it is written because there's no, there's not even a comma in all of this. So rubbish pedophilia is rife in the Catholic Church since, well, last five to eight centuries, priests, cardinals, even nuns charged with abuse, mental, physical, mental, and sexual. That's why the church spent billions defending guilty people, yet you were exposed, your money paid off, authorizes, and even witnesses. Whew. Let's, let's break this. I mean, this is kind of like a, a comment vomit. I'm just, I just created a new phrase, a comment vomit, where someone just obviously had a lot on their mind, but didn't actually take time to think of this. Okay, rubbish. I'm not sure what rubbish is. Pedophilia is rife in the Catholic Church since the, well, five to eight centuries. Um, I just want to let you know that pedophilia was actually from uh, years BC, like before Christ. So to say that it was only in the f last five to eight centuries is... Uh, anachronistically inaccurate. The sin of abusing children has been going on much, much longer, much longer. And that is sad to say. We are hopefully a smarter generation, a smarter, more aware, more compassionate, more sensitive century now, because we're actually looking at the past and seeing what was good and what was bad. And pedophilia has always been bad. And to say that cardinals, nuns, and priests abuse physical and mental and sexual, that's why the church sent billions. There's no disagreement here. There's no disagreement. And I believe that's wrong, which is why we have to expose the files. That's the point. Yes, was the Catholic Church exposed? To some degree, we also tried to expose it. It didn't go anywhere, if you heard my previous comments. But we also opened up the records, people. We opened up the records so people can actually see what has been going on and what has been done. Was everything done perfectly in the past? Heavens, no. But that's, again, a lot of circumstances. I don't think it was for nefarious or sinister reasons, truly. I don't think that's the case. I think part of it was ignorance and uneducation, uneducated uh, society and clergy. There just wasn't, unfortunately, a lot there at that time to say what we need to do is this, 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 and this. Nobody else did it. Coaches, teachers, politicians, police officers, family members, nothing happened to them either unless it turned violent. And then there was kind of like some physical abuse. But you're right, mental and sexual abuse are sometimes kept in the dark. The physical abuse would be easily proven. And so there's a lot here. And when you say that we paid off authorizes, I think you meant authorities and even witnesses, that might be true. But that again, might have just been the practice. That might have just been the practice. And guess what? It's still happening now. So what are we supposed to do about it? What we're supposed to do about it is 
is again, take the highest well-known example in cases of sexual abuse. The churches was one. And guess what we did? Yes, some to some degree we were exposed, to other degrees we exposed it, but we definitely opened up our files for as much transparency as the law required. Take that law and apply it to the Epstein case. That's all we're asking you to do. So listen, to all of those who offer comments, I want to say thank you. We could have some heated debates and discussion. That doesn't mean that we have to hate each other, but it does mean that we have to have a hard conversation, bitter herbs of truth, made a little bit more bite sizable. And hopefully we might even have a chance to do some of this live at some point, but it does require us to have the support from you. So please make sure you pass on this show to other family and friends. Make sure that they subscribe, like, share, and offer your comments. And please support us on Patreon where we can offer you even more perks and more exclusive content. You'll get access to what we call the upper room, which is a cache of a ton of our talks, uh, online conferences, some spiritual meditations. You can get access to all of that just by joining Patreon for only $5 a month. You'll get access to all of that. And also, if you want to help support us even more, you could be listed as a producer. And guess what? We'll have even more opportunities to interact where you can share with me your thoughts and even bring a positive influence to our show. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening. God bless you and stay hungry for God. <laughs>